107 years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now, we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as the final resting place for those who gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow these grounds. The brave men, the living and dead, who consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but can never forget what they did here. I went on to finish that address, three minutes or so, which was all about a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Speech was over. The Chicago Tribune came out the next day and said, Who is this man giving this dishwatery utterances of a speech? Where did he come up with this? If they had just read into my message a little bit more, when I said four score, I meant 80 years, four score and seven, 87. Many, I'm told, didn't even know what a score was. I was saying, folks, that our founding fathers had formed this great country. And I believe the founding fathers never meant for any state to secede from the Union. It was not put into the Constitution. Perhaps it should have been. The South would say, show me where we can't secede. I would retort back, show me where you can. I believe that the war would end shortly thereafter, even though Lee got away. I declared the proclamation of amnesty and reconstruction. But Lee was the mighty foe who would now get down in his entrenches in Petersburg. But now, my true hero, Grant and Sherman. Oh, I believe that William Tecumseh Sherman is the unsung hero of this war. Sherman's headquarters were right here across the way from Fort Duffield. William Tecumseh Sherman, the march to the sea. And now the two of them have Lee in trouble. I am told that Lee would rather die a thousand deaths than to surrender. You see, he believes, I believe, that he will be hung. Nothing further could be from the truth. You see, the message that I gave to Ulysses S. Grant, our General in Chief, is that chew and choke as much as possible. We must preserve the Union. Lee had never met a foe like Grant. And when he does surrender, let him up easy. You see, just two weeks ago in my second inaugural address, I'm sure you remember, I said both read the same Bible and both prayed to the same God. Each invoked its aid against the other. Judge not, but thou shalt not be judged. <coughs> with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work that we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who are born the widow in the battle, and to do all which may achieve and cherish among ourselves. And with all nations, there will be no revenge in my administration as I go back now and receive 
the battlefront good news that this war will be over. And I want to move forth with reconstruction, with the most important thing that my mother, Nancy Hanks, taught me here in Kentucky. Matthew 22, 38. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love one another. We are all one nation now as we come together to celebrate this victory. Well, I bid you all an affectionate farewell as I must go back to Washington now to get some more good battlefront news. Thank you. Well, as we always do, I'd like to first see if anyone has any questions of Governor Helm who was the governor while I was a congressman in late 1840s, 1850. So we would be negligent if we didn't give you a chance to just throw some missiles at us. <laughs> or questions or anything that you might have. Governor Helm first. 